In this video, we are going to perform the audiometry test within the new MedRex Studio software. We will review how to mask air and bone conduction thresholds. The purpose of masking is to measure the air conduction and bone conduction thresholds of an ear without the influence of the opposite ear. Crossover of the signal through the skull can cause the non-test ear to hear the tone presented and elicit a response before the test ear actually heard the tone. This would create the illusion of better thresholds in the test ear. When determining to mask, you want to compare the thresholds between ears and see if the inner attenuation values of the transducers come into play. You want to make sure you avoid overmasking, and that is when you present the masking level in the non-test ear that's equal to or exceeds the inner attenuation plus the bone conduction threshold of the test ear. When masking the air conduction thresholds, you want to present the masking tone to the non-test ear at threshold plus 15 decibels and present the tone to the test ear at threshold. If the patient does not respond, Increase the intensity of the tone in the test ear by 5 decibels and present again. If the patient responds, increase the intensity of the masking noise in the non-test ear by 5 decibels. Repeat the process until the patient responds at the same tone intensity level while increasing the masking noise by 5 decibels 3 times in a row. This is also known as the plateau method. For masking bone conduction, you want to present the masking noise to the non-test ear using the air conduction transducer at threshold plus 15 decibels and present the tone to the test ear using the bone conduction oscillator at threshold. Make sure the test ear is not occluded by the air conduction transducer. If it is, you need to take into account the occlusion effect correction. If the patient does not respond, increase the intensity of the tone by 5 decibels in the test ear. If the patient does respond, increase the intensity of the masking noise in the non-test ear by 5 decibels. Repeat the process until the patient responds at the same tone intensity level while increase the masking noise by 5 decibels three times in a row, again also known as the plateau method. So in the studio software you will see that we have a significant asymmetry in the thresholds that we plotted earlier. The right ear is significantly better than the left ear, and we need to mask that right ear in order to make sure that we do not get false thresholds for the left side. So in this case, we will make sure that we select the air conduction transducer, the left ear, and we also want to change any characteristics of the masking tone that we need to change. So the type of signal, the output, or the ear side. In this case, on the right side, we want to present the masking tone at 40 decibels, which is threshold, plus 15. So that brings us to 55. And we want to present on the left side at threshold, which is 85 decibels. When ready to present the masking, you need to instruct the patient to ignore the masking tone in that right ear and only respond when they hear the beeping tones or the continuous tone or whatever tone you're presenting on that left side. So click the masking button here and it will highlight for you. When you present, you will see that the symbol changes to the masked left ear symbol for audiometry. Once we have a response from the patient that they heard the tone over the masking noise, we want to then perform the plateau method and the plateau method consists of three responses at the same tone levels, in this case 85 decibels, and we would increase and present again, increase masking, present again, and increase masking, present again. So we want to make sure that they respond three times at that masking level. We can then proceed to the remaining frequencies that need masking, and also from there you can move over to mask the bone conduction on the left side as well.